Hello everyone, thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Mr. Matt and this is Dr. Tot. Dr. Tot, do you want a cookie for class? Very good. And welcome to SAT ACT prep. This is quick drill set A to operations with radicals. Remember that when we were talking about radicals, it's really, it's helpful to remember the rules of radicals as being parallel to the rules of fractions. When we need to add or subtract fractions, we need a common denominator. If we want to add or subtract radicals, we need a common radicant. A radicant is the number underneath of the radical sign. When we multiply or divide values, specifically multiply, um, we multiply numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. With radicals, when we multiply, it's coefficient times coefficient, radicant times radicant, while keeping the radical sign in, in place. The coefficients are the numbers outside of the radical sign, the radicands are the numbers inside of the radical sign. So I know that might have been a lot, but it might be, it's a lot more helpful um, to go through some examples. So let me share my screen with you. If you have any questions at any point, then please just drop me a comment below. If you find these videos helpful, then please like and subscribe and share with your friends. Uh, this this uh, worksheet will be available on Certified Learning Center's website. Just make sure you're looking at the document labeled one, reference number 1004-7. So I'd recommend that you pause the video after we read the question aloud and attempt the problem for yourself, then unpause the video uh, and watch the solution. So question number one asks, what is the value of the expression quantity x squared plus 2 quantity divided by y squared minus 3 when x is equal to 2 root 2 and y is equal to 3 root 2. So take a few moments and solve that problem please. So substituting in for the values of x and y we're going to get 2 root 2 quantity squared plus 2 divided by 3 root 2 quantity squared minus 3. Evaluating inside of the parentheses, you need to make sure that this, these exponents go to both values. So you're going to have to square the coefficient and square the radicand. But when you square the radicand, remember that that number is underneath of a radical sign, which represents the square root. That's the opposite operation of squaring. So the effect is just to eliminate the square root because uh, they are the opposite operations of each other. Just like if you multiply by 2 and then divide by 2, or if you add 5 and then you subtract 5, you've basically undone what you originally did. That's what's going on here. So for the first in the numerator, when we have 2 squared, 2 squared, let me write it all out to be completely clear. So we're going to have 2 squared times the square root of 2 squared plus 2 over 3 squared times the square root of 2 squared minus 3. 2 squared is 4. The square root of 2 squared just cancels the square root out, so that's just 2. And then we still have that plus 2 hanging on. 3 squared is 9. The square root of 2 squared, again, just cancels the square root out, so that's 2. And then we have that minus 3 carrying along. 4, uh, four times 2 is 8. 18 times 2 is 8, excuse me, 9 times 2 is 18, so we're going to have 18 minus 3. 8 plus 2 is 10, 18 minus 3 is 15. We can divide both values or reduce both, uh, both values by 5. 10 goes into 5 2 times, 10 go, uh, excuse me, 5 goes into 10 2 times, 5 goes into 15 3 times, so our simplified answer here is going to be 2 thirds. Question number two asks, what's the value of the expression 
2x plus y quantity divided by 2y minus x whole quantity squared when x is equal to 3 root 2 and y is equal to 2 root 2. And that quantity squared is around that entire complex fraction. So take a few moments and solve that problem, please. So again, substituting in for x and y, we're going to have 2 times x, which is 3 root 2, plus y, which is 2 root 2, divided by 2 times y, which is 2 root 2, minus x, which is 3 root 2, whole quantity squared. Okay, so 2 times 3 root 2 in the numerator. The 2 doesn't have a radical, so it's just that 2 affects only the coefficient of 3. So 2 times 3 root 2 is going to be 6 root 2. So we're going to have 6 root 2 plus 2 root 2 over 2 times 2 root 2 is going to be 4 root 2. Again, the 2 only affects that coefficient of 2 minus that 3 root 2 whole thing squared. Now we have common radicands, so in the numerator and denominator all the radicands are 2, so we can add or subtract the coefficients directly. Just like with fractions, you need common denominators, but once you have common denominators, you keep the denominator, add or subtract the, the numerators. With radicals, once you have common radicands, you keep the radicand, add or subtract the coefficients. So this is the same thing as 6 plus 2 times the square root of 2 over 4 minus 3 times the square root of 2 quantity squared. So that's 8 root 2 over 1 root 2 quantity squared. So that's the same thing as 8 root 2 over root 2 quantity squared. The root 2's will cancel directly and this is just 8 squared, which is going to be 64. Question number 3. If the third root of 27 plus the square root of y is equal to the third root of 125, what is the value of y? So take a few moments and solve that problem, please. So we can evaluate these numbers directly, or these third roots directly. The third root of 27 is asking you what number raised to the third power is 27. If you have a graphing calculator, you can also evaluate this using a fractional exponent by converting the third root into an exponent of one-third. So in your graphing calculator, if you did 27 caret, that's a little up arrow button, it's called a caret, but 27 caret and then put in parentheses one-third, you're going to get three. The third root of 27 is three because three to the third power is 27. They're opposite um, conceptually. So the, th three, the third root of 27 plus the square root of y is equal to the third root of 125 will simplify into just 3 plus the square root of y is equal to, now the third root of 125 is 5 because 5 to the third power is 125 and in your calculator if you did 125 caret to the 1 divided by 3 power you would get 5. So that's another way of evaluating the third root. So this is just going to simplify down into 5. If I subtract 3 on both sides, this tells me that the square root of y is equal to 5 minus 3 is 2. Solving for y, I need to take this, I need to square both sides to get rid of that square root. So y is equal to 2 squared, which is 4. Question number four asks, the third root, if the third root of 64 plus the square root of y is equal to the third root of 216, what is the value of y? So please take a few moments and solve that problem.
So again, look to see if we can evaluate these radicals directly. The third root of 64 happens to be 4, because 4 to the third power is 64. So 4 to the third power is 64, so the third root of 64 is 4. In your calculator, you could have done 64 caret 1 divided by 3, and that would give you 4. Now 216, that's going to be, the third root of 216 I believe is 6. Let me just check that, yep. So because 6 to the third power is 216, the third root of 216 is 6, and if you wanted to check in your calculator, if you do 216 caret 1 divided by 3, that will give you 6. So the third root of 64 plus the square root of y is equal to the third root of 216. So the third root of 64 is 4, so we're going to have 4 plus the square root of y is equal to the third root of 200 and 216 is 6. So again, we're going to get the square root of y is equal to 6 minus 4 is 2. So y is also going to be 4 for number 4. Question number 5 asks, if the third root of m divided by 3 is a positive integer, what is the smallest possible positive integer value of m? So take a few moments and solve that problem, please. So first of all, let's just look at the cubes of the numbers starting. because First, they're asking for the smallest possible value. So we want to start with 0 or start with the smallest positive integer, which would be 1, um, and then move our way systematically up. If we look at the cubes of numbers, we know that this is a positive integer. So when we divide it by 3, we have to get an integer back. 1 to the third power is 1. If we divide 1 by 3, we're not going to get an integer. 1 divided by 3 is 1 third, so that's not going to work. If you look at 2 to the third power, that's 8. 8 divided by 3 is not going to be an integer. That's not a whole number because 8 is not divisible by 3. So that's also not going to work. 3 to the third power, however, is 27. Notice that 27, the third root of 27 would be 3, and therefore 3 divided by 3 would give you 1. So um, the smallest possible integer value of m here is going to be 27 because the third root of 27 over 3 would give us 3 over 3, which is a positive integer. Any other possible number would have to be larger than 27. 27 is the smallest that's going to uh, generate or satisfy that condition. And last question, number 6. If the fourth root of n divided by 4 is a positive even integer, what is the smallest possible positive integer value of n? So please take a few moments and attempt that problem. So this is very similar to number 5. Of course, now we have the fourth or quartic root of n instead of the third root of m. Um, and then also they're throwing in the fact that um, the result is a pot not only a positive integer, but a positive even integer. So we have to take that into consideration. Also, because they use the word smallest, I want to go through this in a systematic way, starting with the smallest positive integer, which would be 1. And we're taking the fourth root, so I'm going to do the opposite, look at the opposite result of exponentiating to the fourth power. So notice 1 to the 4th power is just 1 times 1 times 1 times 1, so that's always going to just be 1. 2 to the 4th power, that's 2 times 2, which is 4, times 2, which is 8, times 2, which is 16. 16 divided by 4 would be, 16 divided by 4 is 4, so that actually works there. So notice that the 4th root of 16, oh no, that actually would not work because the fourth root, if we tried this, the fourth root of 16 is going to be 2. 2 over 4 
is going to be one half, which is not an integer value. So we have we can't use um, sixteen. If we look at three, so three times three times three times three is going to be eighty one. Eighty one is not divisible by four, so that's not going to work either. So let's continue with four. Let's look at four to the fourth power. Four times four times four times four is 256. So notice that the fourth root of 256 divided by four, that would work because that's going to give us four over four, which is one. So the smallest integer value, um, well, no, hold on, that gives us an integer, but that still does not give us a positive even integer because the result of this is still odd because one is an odd number. So actually that doesn't work. We have to continue on. Five to the fourth power, that's probably not going to work because that's going to be an exponent, that's going to have a unit value of uh, five at the end. But let's just check. That's 625, that's not divisible by four. Let's look at six. Six times six times six times six. That's 1,296. So 1,296, the fourth root of that would be six divided by four would give us two-thirds. So notice the fourth root of 1,296 over four. That's going to give us six over four, which would actually give us three halves, not two-thirds, but three halves. That's not an integer. So we actually can't do this until we go all the way up to 8 to the fourth power. So 8 times 8 times 8 times 8, that's going to be 4096. Notice that the fourth root of 4096 over 4 is going to give us 8 over 4, which will give us 2. So the smallest possible positive integer value of n, in this case, is going to be 4,096. If you have any questions on anything that we've done in this video, then please let me know in the comments below. But otherwise, I hope you have a wonderful night. And Dr. Tot, would you like to say goodbye to everybody? Dr. Tot, did you fall asleep? You got to say goodbye to everybody. Come on. Dr. Tot, come on. You say goodbye? Come on. They're waiting for you. Can you say bye? Can you say bye? Come on, you can say it. Bye. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> all right, thank you guys very much. I hope you have a wonderful night, and I'll talk to you all soon.